why do I tell my students to go other places? I go, you don't realize how good I am until you go train with John Lovell. Really, James? Yeah. <laughs> you're good thing you're not being rude. No. Um, yeah, shut up. <laughs> shut up. For a moment, you're like, wait, really? Maybe it's <laughs> no. No. Is that Evan? No! No! This is nerve-wracking. Wunderbar, 100% success rate. You foxy lady. Lock to the rear, strip magazine, finger or cycle, 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 then reload rack and fall. All right, that worked pretty darn well. Fight your own battles, oh, Evan! Yeah. <laughs> Fight your own battles! You battle. think you got him in this fight? You want to take me on? Meg, get him out of there! My life was dramatically changed about four years ago. And it happened pretty subtly. I made a couple videos and put them on YouTube. Man, a whole bunch of you folks that really resonated with our ethos and what I was trying to accomplish. I was thinking your thoughts back to you and a whole big movement grew and it's still growing and that's super exciting. But the man who really got me into YouTube, who I, I did my very first stuff with, is a very controversial and polarizing figure by the name of James Yeager. James Yeager, uh, was one of the very first internet gun guys. So he was doing it before anyone else was. There was just a few of them uh, at that time and they really built the gun industry. Whether you hate them or whether you love them, he, he was a force for good in that space and he was certainly important really pushing me in uh, to doing the YouTube world. He was the first to recognize it like, John, you should do this. I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna do it. He's like, no, you should do this. Uh, and so I owe a lot to him and I wanted to introduce you to him. I guarantee you can learn something from him. Uh, and he's James Yeager. Hey, James, <laughs> you, know, you just appeared out of nowhere. That was amazing. <laughs> you just snuck in all secret like, that's great. Oh, it's, uh, um, well, um, I thank you, I think for that introduction. Uh, on a side note as well, you are the, the closest thing I have to uh, knowing a real pirate. Right. You you know, I think you want to, you go more Viking. You identify more as a Viking. Exactly. Uh, but you, I think. Marauder uh, is really well. And you, for. you actually played a Marauder in a real movie. What was the name of that movie? Uh, Daylight's End. Daylight's End. And you nailed it. Your, <laughs> your weapon manipulations and stuff and your shooting, it was great. So you were first in the internet gun space. There was a few others. Who, who uh, else was doing stuff? I don't really know who was first, but. I was up front, for and, sure. And I meant you were first amongst another crowd yeah, of people yeah, yeah. that were first. The right? first wave. Well, how'd you get started? Uh, with what? With YouTube in well, general. That, that was the, because you had huge following, then it was all taken away, and I want to get to that as well. And just to tease you guys, we're going to end up getting into an area that James is really strong in, and that's... Uh, long-term sustainability preparations for zombies, apocalypse, whatever. So if that's your bag, stay tuned. We're going to hit that really hard. But, uh, well, I mean, how, how to peel this onion. Um, so basically, I began, okay, I was a cop, and my scam was I started being a writer for gun magazines, and then that let me go to classes. So I got to go to a bunch of classes under the, hey, I'll write an article for the class, which I did. I got published in, you know, American Handgunner and Swap Magazine and you know, all those things. And then as uh, technology advanced um, in the, the mid-1990s, I got on this thing that uh, called the internet. I don't know if you've heard yeah, of that. Yeah, uh, Al Gore created Yeah, Al Gore, it Tennessee, another Tennessean. You know, invented that. Even um, when I say it, like my eye twitches. My eye. <laughs> so I started uh, posting on the internet in 98, officially. And I put my first video on YouTube in 2005, which was the first year of YouTube. What led you to do that? Uh, I, I don't know. It never was meant for the world. Right. It was just meant for me to send links to people that were going to come to train, and that sparked the fire. Um, you're a polarizing dude. 
you know? No one's middle of the road about James. I've never met someone who knew of you and thought of like, oh, I don't know, either way of like, they're like, he's the worst, I hate him. Or he's like, no, he's awesome. He's really forced for good. <laughs> Trains a lot of people, but no one's in the middle road. You're a polarizing figure. Is that on purpose? Um, it's it's a, a byproduct of my personality. I, I, don't, I don't hold back. Right. And uh, so I try to be upfront all the time. And right. so, so sometimes I am not as uh, delicate as I should be. Mm -hmm. I, I'm like a doctor with horrible bedside manner. Got it. But I am a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so I, you know, I I make people mad. I, I don't I don't try to spare their feelings and things like that. And I don't have time to spare their feelings. I'm doing triage. Got it. I notice a lot of people that don't like you, don't know you personally, and once they do meet you personally... Sometimes then, they still don't like you. Then me. they like you. <laughs> and I would argue you're actually uh, far more controversial on purpose, more brash to the camera than you would be if they were in front of you. No. Nope. I disagree. I disagree. This is something real cool, and this, this shocks a lot of people because you are the polarizing James Yeager, right? Uh, you took uh, night vision class I was teaching and uh, we went through three days of training together and I'm a no-name guy uh, and it was amazing that every time I told you something you do a, a run through the shoot house and you're clearing rooms and stuff and I would give you a critique you'd never argue with me you would just immediately say okay Roger that and then you would do exactly what I said uh, I was young <laughs> Unknown, and here you are, James Yeager, YouTube celebrity and the, the staff. But that just struck me because I've had a lot of students that want to argue with me. Mm -hmm. And you would never argue. And I'm like, holy smokes, this guy's really teachable. He's, he's a joy to have in class. And you weren't grandstanding in front of your own cadre, which would have been a real temptation, a big guy. And you didn't do that at all. And for three days of like, man, you won me over hardcore in that way of like, you're really, really teachable. And so how does that work with, you're a polarizing figure, but you're really respectful as a student? Well, I mean, just because I'm polarizing doesn't mean I'm rude or close-minded. Mm. No. I it... think you're rude on purpose on the internet. <laughs> I think you're rude on purpose. <laughs> rude to whom on the internet? Um, People that choose to be annoyed by what I say? Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. The internet's crazy. You yeah. Know? The internet's crazy. The internet is Thunderdome, and you're worried about my <laughs> etiquette in Thunderdome. <laughs> uh, I guess um, I'm fine with controversy. Just It just gnaws at you when the trolls just nonstop like pari uh, piranhas on every little thing. You're kind of like, Ugh, oh, leave no, me alone. I love it. Why, why is it that no one... Yeah, everyone is a professional on the internet, except the actual professional <laughs> making the video. It's kind of like, everyone knows better. There was, uh, there was one uh, video I was doing with Craig Douglas and Brandon Davis, who's Brandon Davis is a uh, UFC professional MMA fighter. Amateurs. Craig Douglas. Amateurs. <laughs> yeah, Craig Douglas <laughs> I know is Craig. knife fighting extraordinaire. I know Craig for a and me, long time. Me and Craig were both special operations guys. And so we're teaching fighting. And when I got into the comments, Everyone was challenged, like, oh, in a real fight, that wouldn't, whatever. You don't know anything. And I'm kind of like, the audacity here of, like, these guys are literally <laughs> professionals in their craft. And uh, the internet's a weird place, man. I, I, uh, I love it. And, and the thing is, is, like, it's this nameless, faceless thing, and I'm supposed to be nice to it no matter what? No. When it's mean to me, I'm mean back. So, um you had a huge following on YouTube, and then YouTube canceled you. They literally reset you to zero, and since then... No, they, they deleted that channel. They, right. Yeah, they deleted the channel. You had to make a new channel and start over from scratch. Yeah. And that's where you're at now, is you're building back up. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened there, and looking back, is there something you should have done different, or how do you feel about all that? What happened? In my whole life, every time somebody has put an obstacle in front of me, when I get on top of it, I can see further. Mm -hmm. And so those things don't bother me. I mean, they, they really, you know, it gets kind of boring. So it gave me a new challenge or a new thing to overcome or a new thing to work around. Or So like when they, when they ask my channel, yeah, I mean, it kind of sucked, but here I am. I mean, I didn't lose business. I didn't lose traction. 
in the community. I mean, I just had to start over. Why did you get canceled? Who knows? Got it. I mean, I had three strikes on their ambiguous list of rules, right. and they never told me what the strikes were. Yeah. You know, so two of the strikes were on videos that were two years old or older. Yeah, so we've gotten uh, strikes before, and we weren't actually sure where they came from, and we're just trying to figure out what in the world are we violating here? And some of them, it would happen on videos that had been up for a real long time, and we were dealing with shadow banning, and we're dealing with demonetization like crazy, mm -hmm. but you were, the you were one of the first gun guys, and then you were one of the first to actually get canceled. And uh, I'm glad you took it in stride, but if you hadn't built up the training company that you had, that could have literally taken your business away. Well, a lot of people don't understand, I'm not a YouTuber, I'm a trainer. Got it. And so the, the, for a lot of people, YouTube is how they make their business, how they make their life, that's their world. Right. For me, it's training. Right. And so they can't take that away from me. Yeah, which is awesome. But if you had been a YouTuber, yeah, yeah, it would have hurt. They would have canceled your whole business. Yeah, it would have hurt. Mm -hmm. So are you going to navigate these trepidatious cancel culture kind of waters differently in the future? I haven't. Yeah. I still say what I want to say. As you look at big tech playing these games with us, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's kind of hard and I'm, I'm caught between this rock and a hard place on one thing. I want to say exactly what I think mm -hmm. in the way I want to say it. Mm -hmm. And that's the brave. And, and I've got that of like, I'm a patriot. But I also want to be smart because I, what if I was brave and said the thing that needs to be saying, but I, I said it in a way that still didn't rob its potency, but it didn't get me canceled so I can actually keep communicating our message longer. You see the- Yeah, no, I, I understand. The, the conundrum. So. How do you navigate that? I don't. You don't, you just. They navigate me. Brave and stupid? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> You're supposed to get offended. I just fired a round over your bow, man. No, 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 <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, I just, I just won't, I refuse. And that's, that's a respectable stand. So right now our country is in a real bad place. What do you see future of America as a patriot and what in the world should we do about it? Well, if we look at history, um, and people want to argue with me about this, the United States is the oldest country in the world. And everybody goes, no, no, these other countries are older. No, we have the oldest constitution, the oldest form of government in the world. If you said we're the oldest constitutional republic, I'd go with that. What, what, what government organization is older than the United States? England? Nope, they don't have a king anymore. Well, they have a queen, they still have a monarch. That's not part of the government. No, that is literally part of the government. They're jackasses anyway. They're buck tooth inbred Really, James? Yeah. <laughs> you're, good thing you're not being rude. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo for that. All, all Englishmen? Oh, uh, pretty much. Yeah. Come on. Anyway, the shot heard around the world wasn't heard around the world because it was really loud it sparked the overthrow of all the monarchies and other governments in the world. Got it. And so every civilization from, from the Romans to us to everybody goes through stages. The Titler cycle, it's a well-known cycle. And we are in the final stages of every great civilization that has ever existed. Um, some people say it's inevitable. It, it appears that it might be inevitable, but here we are. Now, what do we do about it? I don't know. Uh, you on a personal level, uh, I mean, you've got all kinds of stockpiles of food and water and you got a bunch of people in your network and you got a couple of guns. Are you anti-gun or do you got, you have got I'm, some gun? I'm, I'm ish, I'm gun ish. And, and you got some bullets. I, I'm good at bulleting. You're, you're good at bullets. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, cool. And so, um, on a scale of one to 10, one being like not ready and 10, 10 foil hat, full on capital P prepper, where are you? <laughs> and I don't know, <laughs> who knows? And here's the thing is I've, I've spent a considerable amount of time and effort and money getting ready for the apocalypse. And I'm always wondering what is that 49 cent item I didn't buy that yeah. the whole thing will hinge on? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you got a big truck and it's got a covered back uh -huh. and it's so filled. I've already, I already looked at it. It's just jam packed full. So you can't actually use it to transport truckish things anymore. It's I just know, loaded I, down. I, I for, didn't buy a truck to haul my, my, my buddy's couch home from the furniture store. store. I, that's not why I have a truck. I was going to ask you to help me move a couch. So this is, <laughs> this is actually really awkward now. So, uh, all right, never mind. We'll just move on. No, but it's stocked full with prepperish gear. I haven't gone through your truck yet. Yeah, but you're not going to. I'm gonna. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm a long way from home. Got it. You know, I might need stuff. What stuff? What do you got back there? Stuff. No. Come on. You got like... I got some bug out bags and some rifles and some ammos and some foods and some how, fuel. How much, how much ammo you got on you in any given moment? Like sitting here or you, like in my in, truck? Like in your truck, in this proximity. There, there's probably in the truck, probably 2,000 rounds in mags. And so it's all loaded up in mags? Yeah, plus I have loose ammo. Very good. Cool. What kind of guns you got? ARs and... 308s ARs and 5.56 ARs and some handguns and and a shotgun. You I got think. a lot of water? No. Are you kidding me? No. No water? I didn't say, you said a lot. Do you have some water? Yes. Can I have a water? No. I'm actually quite parched. No. It's dehydrated. And you wonder why people don't like you. You got all that stuff and I can't have a water? You're dead to me. It's all dehydrated. You're dead to me. Cancel this channel. <laughs> All my water's dehydrated. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> False. You cannot do that. That actually is just air. <laughs> it turns out dehydrated water is air. Okay. But seriously, um, you know, I, I've got some fuel back there, some guns, and, you know, I got some medical supplies. I got a couple of medical kits and things like that. All right. So I have a growing threat in my mind. Uh, and it's been there for a long time. And so like you, I'm, I'm making preparations. I've got food at home and water and water filtrations and survival gear. Got a few guns, got a few bullets. And so I, I'm doing the same kind of stuff. But I worry, um, uh, where is money safe and what do you use money for? I, more enthusiastically in the last year, I want to not need money anymore for anything of like so that if I needed to, we could completely switch to all of our own food and solar panels and that stuff. And I'm like, and if you never need it, then fantastic. I'll just like it and be able to cut my overhead way, way low. Uh, so how are you going about food preparation? And Well, like sometimes when people start getting into this, it's just, it's too much. Like, yeah. ah, you know, what do I do? So if we look at the you know basics, you know, food, water, shelter, uh, water, you should own a Berkey water filter, mm -hmm. the biggest one you can put in your house. So, did you judge me when you saw my? It's a little small. Medium. I thought, I, I thought that was like your just your kitchen model or something. I looked for, around for another one in the garage. Why and I you see one. Were you really snooping my house? <laughs> no. You jerk! <laughs> Have fun at your hotel tonight. <laughs> Fantastic. No, but 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 a Berkey Berkey water filter for sure. We got the under sink filter stuff too. But well, as long as the water keeps working keeps working it's good uh, but I am as, far as, as far as food this is the one that that gets most people in the conundrum to use your word um, they don't know how much or what or whatever the case may be and so I just say just simplify just at the beginning to simplify everything if you say that your caloric intake is whatever 2,000 calories a day and you have you know 10 people in your house so you need that many calories per day per person, so that's, you know, whatever. 20,000. Yeah, but I'm just saying, extrapolate that yeah. to a week, to a month, to a year, and at least that's somewhere to start. And you can, even if you're gonna put a bucket of rice up, you can look at the label on the rice, and a half a cup of rice is this many calories, blah, blah, blah. At least note that, put that on the side of the bucket, and you know that's about this many days worth of food for our family. Yeah. And so you can start kind of going, all right, because I hear people all the time say, I have this many pallets or this many of this or this many of that, but they don't really know how long that will last. Mm -hmm. And so just starting just counting calories is going to be the easiest way to start getting a handle on that. 
Yeah, that's a lot of money. What's 7.3 million calories a year right. cost? And that's when you start going, well, the rice is cheaper than sugar, and, and but sugar will do this, and then you know we need protein, and what's the cheapest protein that will give me the highest calorie? You know, so you start, you can get too far into it. You know, it can get too deep. Got it. All right, that's what you do with food and water, survival, bullets. What about uh, money? What do you do with money? Get some. Okay. <laughs> you tuck it under the mattress or put it in the stock market or you, um, you staying in the true pirate fashion and you... Three lock box. Doing some gold. And <laughs> what, what do you do? What do you do with it? So... Um, and what about debt? I am not a financial advisor. Let me just say that. Right? I know. I'm just saying, what do you do? I pay off stuff. Okay. And so, you know, like, uh, practically speaking, I'm debt free. Okay. And so, um, I, I don't know what the right thing is. Guys all the time, they say, should I buy gold and silver and things like that? And I'm like, well, what would you do with that gold and silver if the world collapsed? Yeah. Whatever you would buy with that gold and silver is cheaper right now than hoarding gold and silver. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, big picture stuff. I mean, I think for regardless of the, the you know, the apocalypse, you should be smart, pay your bills. If you can pay stuff off early, you should pay stuff stuff off early. But if you're talking about should I take my sell my Amazon stock and pay off my house, why not? Like what's I mean, yeah, you could potentially make more money as the Amazon stock grows, but having, you know, bird in hand better than two in the bush kind of a mentality, you know. Yeah. You know, our, our gr grandparents or great grandparents that lived through the depression would, would be like, get rid of that stock and pay off your house. Yeah, no kidding. You know? Or, and for me, it's like guns and bullets. Bullets, you can always, you can hunt with it, you can defend yourself with it, you can trade it, and it Pre goes up in value every year. Precious metals, yeah. It's like precious metals. So what, <laughs> what are your precious metals you go, stock? Go, gold, brass, and silver. Uh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> gold, brass, copper, and lead, sorry. He's talking about just a bullet. It's just a bullet. <laughs> You're talking about a bullet. <laughs> your precious metals are just bullets. Yeah. That's great. But, um, I don't know what you know the correct answer is, but a lot of people think if there's a huge meltdown, they won't come and take my house. Yeah, they will. They yeah. did it in the Great Depression. Like yeah. even when nobody nobody can pay their bills, there's going to be somebody coming around collecting debt. Yeah, and they will take your stuff from you. I don't, I, anybody that thinks that if there's a collapse, that, so, that somehow the bank is not going to come and get their stuff is wrong. Yeah. So you have a huge training company. I don't know of really anyone that's training more students per year than you guys, physically, in person. Front side. Yeah, front side is. Okay, how many students per year are you guys averaging? Tactical response. About 5,000. Holy smokes. That is a lot of training. Mm -hmm. uh, very good. Um, can you give us some uh, idea of your training philosophy? Yeah. Some misnomers if somebody's kind of like, well, I, I don't have a lot of training. I got some guns. I don't have a lot of training. What I, I teach good people to kill bad people. Okay. That, that, I mean, that's it. Like, I, I, on purpose, don't, don't use words like neutralize or self-defense. Like, I teach good people to kill bad people. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, So, sorry to yeah, no. disagree, but Joe Biden said you could just shoot him in the leg. So... <laughs> it's awkward. Well, he, then he said to shoot the shotgun. Out could, over their head. Could you get in his class and maybe that'd help you out? I think maybe he should get in my class. I think you're right. <laughs> I think you're right. All right, tra training philosophy stuff. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, I want people to get a value when they're there. And I consider myself to be an educator, a teacher, more than just some guy that reads off a piece of paper and says, do this thing. I want sure. to motivate and inspire um, my students. And, and we do. And the 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 funny thing is like i get the most satisfaction as a teacher from teaching people that are not my words unteachable mm -hmm. like people with physical defects cerebral palsy multiple sclerosis limbs you know from the wars people with sure. limbs blown off and stuff like that like teaching guys like you you know two arms two legs eyes work and all that that's easy you know i i like the guys in the wheelchairs and the you know, the, I've trained legally blind, legally deaf, you know, all that stuff. So after a while, as an instructor, I'm like, okay, what's the next challenge, you hmm. know, for me? And so, but it's always about 
the fight. It's always about fighting. It's never about administrative gun handling or uh, competition or anything like that. It's it's always about the real use, the martial use of a firearm. That's good. Yeah, it's not just firearms training. It's, hey, there's when a bad guy ambushes you, oftentimes it's to take from you or it's to kill you and that's there's no gentlemanly way to resolve that dispute right. you got to be able to to fight it's a fight yeah. uh, and so I like that you kind of cut straight through that though I know it's not gonna be very palatable to many of you guys um, not everybody deserves to train with me all right okay fair enough I mean that like I have something special and cool. not everybody deserves to have it and if I don't like you, I don't want you to have it. Hmm. That is fair enough. So in preparation for you coming down and hanging out with me, you asked some of your folks, what should we do videos on? Uh, what, uh, what were their ideas? <laughs> um, standard stuff, like I say, use a silencer on your home defense gun, and you, you say not to. Uh, and the, the and I video, I wish I could disinvent. No one, re very few people actually understood my argument. And then when I made the follow-up video thinking, now they'll really get it. I saw in the comments of like, nope, missed it as well. Just totally no capacity for what I was saying. And I don't actually care. You do whatever you want. <laughs> and you can't stop me from doing what I want. So back up off of me, bro. All right, sorry. Yeah, that one, hate that one. All right, go ahead. And the, the you do the thing and I do the thing. Oh yeah, if you don't rack the slide, you're gonna die. Yeah, you're gonna so, die. So fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, for people that have uh, differences in training techniques and stuff, one, you're adamant about what you teach yeah, and yeah. you're saying that because that's the right way. Go train other places, but then you have other people doing different techniques. People say, why do, you, why do I tell my students to go other places? I go, you don't realize how good I am until you go train with John Lovell. That's so good. <laughs> that's so good. I'm, I'm just going to let you have the last word no, there. No, the thing, the thing is, really is uh, we, have to, we have to train with other places and other people and to understand, but no, no one instructor has all the pieces to the puzzle. But we're on a journey, I'm gonna be better tomorrow. You yeah. know? Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to James Yeager's channel. Help no. Him. Just no? No. Why? I don't, I don't need any more subscribers. Not everybody That's deserves such a dumb thing to say. Not everybody deserves to be one of my subscribers. Is this like a reverse psychiatry? <laughs> <laughs> I'm quoted. Did you watch Parks and Recreation where Chris Pratt yeah, said, yeah. "Aha, aha, reverse psychiatry"? <laughs> I got to ignore the pirate. Go subscribe to his YouTube channel. Follow Marauder. what he has to say. Some of it's going to tick you off and you'll hate him, and then other stuff you'll be like. Son of a gun, he's got a good point. And so you'll find all kinds of treasure trove of <laughs> hidden gems in there with uh, James Jaeger. Oh, a lot to you. Thanks so much for helping me on my way and on my journey, sincerely. Yeah. Uh, and make sure you subscribe to us. Most of you who are following and watching our videos, you think you're subscribed, but you're not. So make sure you hit subscribe, toggle notifications bell to all share this video because YouTube is not helping us grow. And consider checking out our content on our Warrior Poet Society network. You have Lieber TV is another great platform. Liber TV, like Liberty. Liber TV. Come on, John. But I, I say Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one's buying that. Liber TV. I read it. I've never heard it said. Liber TV is another resource, guys. Train hard, train smart. And you want to say the closeout thing that no, you say? This is your stuff. What do you say? If you pay and me, I'll for close your video. By. If, you, I will, if, if this is will, a paying gig, I'll close your video. I will pay you. Not well, but I will pay you. No. You do it. Train hard, train smart. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>